So in our previous video, we tackled this part of the latch assembly. We are now going to tackle the base part. So this part here. Our previous tutorial taught us that if we use a different profile, we would get a different effect. Careful selection of the profile means we get less operations in the tree. So we can tackle this object from different profiles. So for instance, if I tackle it from this side, you can see we've got a pretty simple profile to deal with. Therefore, we can take out this shape, utilizing the negative spaces, and then taking out these holes. Or we could tackle it from this side, drawing this profile, coming around, taking out the pockets, removing material from here, leaving these as triangles, and then chamfering off the sides to leave this curve. We also got the holes from the side to deal with. I'm going to be tackling it from the top, but I'm also going to show you what happens when we tackle it from the front and how many operations we get between those. So again, careful selection of the profiles means we have less operations. Therefore, if we have less operations, the model becomes more stable. Let's now build this part. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So let's look at the workflow when we tackle it from this profile, this one here. First, let's have a look at the sketch. You can see we're using symmetry to our advantage. So we start with a sketch which is then padded. The next thing is a pocket with this sketch. So we're taking away this triangle here. This creates this feature. The next pocket is to place a hole in here, followed by this pocket here. Now we could have combined these together in one single pocket The next pocket is to take holes through the sides, followed by the fillet to round off this corner here. Then the chamfer. And finally, because we're working with symmetry, we use the mirror. Let's see how many operations are reduced when we tackle the object from the top. Again, we're using FreeCAD with the part design, but if you're using any other CAD package, then the same principles apply. Now, if we look at this profile, we're going to be using symmetry because we have symmetry across there and it's gonna be beneficial for us to use it. We don't always need to use symmetry and sometimes it's quicker not to use symmetry. For instance, with this part, I can see that we've got a chamfer in here and we've got this fillet that goes around here, which we include in our sketch, then we're going to have to create this on both sides and then add the chamfer to this with both those holes in a single operation. So it'd be quicker and easier just to create one side. If this was a rectangle, let's say if this was a rectangle that come out here, then I'll just create a rectangle, a slot and two holes. And that'll be pretty simple to do because we have the curvature in here. Then we're going to take a different approach and use symmetry and take an advantage of mirroring. So in the part design and I've created a new body and created a new sketch. We're going to be tackling it from the top profile. So we need the XY plane and you'll see the sketch will rotate around to the top. Before we do anything, we got to get our viewpoint into the right dimensions. To do that, there's one of two ways. We can use the dimensions down here to get ourselves 
into the correct dimensions. As you see, we can zoom in and out to get those well, correct. We've used a method of placing down points onto our screen and dimensioning those and using a kind of dot to dot way of joining those up into our main sketch. This is the technique I'm going to use. Look at the technical drawing, let's pick out our main dimensions. So I've added this technical drawing here, this viewpoint, which is without the fillet. So this shows me that this is 17 millimeters long from this point, and also we've got an eight millimeter length here, as well as the 21 millimeter height. So we're gonna go 21, eight, and 17. Also, we need another one here for the eight, and we're gonna keep these two in line with a vertical constraint, and these two in line with a horizontal constraint. Actually, we're gonna keep this one in line as well. So pick all three and place a horizontal constraint across all of those. Make sure your auto constraints on and your avoid redundant auto constraints are on. That's important because our horizontal constraints have already been applied with our constraint that we've just done. So any lines between them, that horizontal constraint will be removed and you won't have to come over to the solver to remove it. That sets some length in here, so setting these two to eight millimeters. And between these two, it's going to be 17. We can see straight away we're not in the right dimensions. If I add 21 millimeters to here, We need to zoom in and we get to our correct dimensions. If we try to do this with our main sketch by just sketching in arcs and lines and then dimension them, then we can get ourselves into a bit of a state where we have to keep on resizing and changing where the arcs are. And it can be a bit of a pain. And getting the main dimensions down and getting your viewpoint dimensioned correctly makes your life a lot easier. Let's start sketching in the geometry. For that, I'm going to follow this sketch and then add a fillet in afterwards. Using the polyline tool, we'll create a sketch between here just by connecting up the points. Now I've missed the left-hand point and we'll close the geometry and that's fix that. So hit escape highlight those two points. Make sure the lines aren't highlighted and use the coincident constraint. Everything is now constrained. Let's add our fillet to here. The fillets sit here. So we've got a number of fillets. We've got a sketch fillet and a constraint preserving sketch fillet. This is the one we're going to use. So we use a constraint preserving fillet and fill it off these points here. We still got our constraint of 17 millimeters and we can add our radius, which is of three millimeters, like so. We're now constrained again and we can push this over to the side. Looking at the technical drawing, we do have a hole here, but we're unsure how far away it is from this point. There's two things you can do here. Your first option is to add the hole and constrain it coincident to this point here. Or we can add a circle that's not constrained, but using the sides and this edge, we use tangent constraint. And again on this side, like so, which means we have this shape that is tangent to those edges. And we keep this point centered between those edges, like so. We then change this to construction geometry. So using the construction geometry or sketch, sketch geometries, toggle construction geometry. This will turn blue and we can add a hole in the middle the construction geometry will just allow that hole to move if we drag this. This will not show up when we exit the sketch. 
the hole is three millimeters in diameter. So let's add that. And we can position this where we want. We also can come in and set a distance between these two using the distance of say two millimeters and we've got that one in there. So we have control over this hole, having it centered across these two lines using tangency. I'm gonna set this just to one millimeter and leave that like that for now. We've got one more part and that's this slot shape here. I'm gonna use a subtractive method to remove that geometry. So coming in and add in a slot hit escape and using the trim to remove material as we trim you can see the line is highlighted in yellow and we get a circle of where the new vertex is going to sit so that's auto constrained to this line let's trim this line as well and remove what's left over hit and delete these constraints will be lost, so we need to place this point on this line. Point on object constraint and do the same for this one as well. Add horizontal constraint and we just need to dimension this. Looking back at the technical drawing, we can see that this is in the middle. So we need symmetry across there. To make the symmetry, I'm going to use this point and this point and finally the middle point and use the symmetry constraint that's now symmetrical we can see if we pull this down this will grow because of the symmetry that's add this radius of 3.5 taking the arc and set the radius of 3.5 now we're fully constrained we can close this and we've got our first sketch. I'm just going to save the document. And I'm saving it as part three. The next step of our journey is to pad this. So we're looking at the full height of the object, which is 10 millimeters. Taking the sketch in the part design, we just add the pad and set that to 10 mil and hit OK. Now we've padded the object, we can move around to another profile. So we're going to come around to the front view and we're going to tackle the object from that profile. So we're looking for symmetry and removing these parts here. Now we've got one of two options. We could add the sketch to the front of this face here or we could use the base plane. I'm just going to use the base plane so I can make sure nothing's selected and we'll create a new sketch and looking along the XZ plane and we can see what we have as we started the modeling from the point of origin here from the last sketch it'll be the same as placing that sketch upon that face that's create that profile if we look back at the technical drawing you can see we have 17 millimeters and two millimeters here. So we need to take this space and this space, but there is another way around that. We can actually sketch this and use basically a reverse pocket. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna use the polyline tool and start to draw in that geometry. So I've added the sketch. And now I'm gonna add some constraints and bring in some geometry from the face. So I'm gonna bring in this part here and also this edge here. We know this length is 17 millimeters. and we have a two millimeter height. And this part is eight millimeters. I'm 
I can now constrain this geometry, these points, Quinston constraint, and make these lines equal, so sort of equal height across there. I'm also going to put a length in between these two, a gain of two millimeters. And now fully constrained. But if I pocket this, we don't get the right result. What we get is a multi-body object that's not allowed in FreeCAD. And also we don't get the right shape. We need the reverse of this. So we need to use it like a cookie cutter. That's simple to produce by creating a rectangle around here. Therefore, this is space and the rest is removed. We can add some constraints in here. But I'm just going to leave it as is. Let's close that and we can see the shape that's going to be removed. So all of this around the outside is going to be removed. If I go for the pocket and go through all, we get the shape that's needed. That's okay that. And now we can create the holes. To do that, we're going to use this face. When we create the holes, because these faces are in a line, we just add the circles to these. So I'm gonna create a sketch on that face. And I'm gonna come in and add the holes one on each. We're just going to place them on that face for the time being and then we're going to constrain them. Looking back at the technical drawing we can see they're in the middle of that face. So we need to pull in some geometry. I'm going to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and use the import geometry tool or external geometry. I'm going to take the corners of these faces like so. And I'm going to use symmetry using the corners and the center point of the circle and create symmetry across there. Let's do the same for the other one. And now we can add the dimensions to these holes with the diameter of three millimeters. We can close and finally pocket those. We can go through all and hit OK. We're almost finished our part. We just need to add the finishing operations. And that includes the chamfer in here using the chamfer tool of 0.5. And looking back at the technical drawing, we can see we've basically finished. All we need to do is add the mirror. We've now come to the point of our model where we're going to mirror over to the other side. Now, this is where it's beneficial to keep those operations simple because to do a part design mirror, we have to pick all the operations to allow us to mirror. So all the operations that build up that model. Come up to part design, apply pattern and mirrored. You can see that the mirror is failing. So there must be a reason for that to fail. We can see over the left hand side, we've got one transformed shape does not intersect support. Let's cancel that and go back through our tree to find the shape. So we have the chamfer, we have the pocket, which I'm gonna press the spacebar on. So I'm moving back through time. Got this pocket here, and then we've got the pad. Let's have a look at this pocket and look at the sketch that we used. Now, if we look at this sketch, it's actually going past this axis. And this is our problem. So if I constrain this down properly, place it upon this axis, point and line constraint, and it will be best to constrain this right down so this all goes green. Let's hit close a minute. We can see we've got some problems. 
go back in. And what I'm going to do is come in and we need to trim this. So we're looking down here. I need to trim this line so it all becomes one and this one. So it's created this shape as half a cookie cutter, basically. Let's close that and we can see the error has now disappeared. Now when we come back to the pad and control select all the other operations and use the mirroring, that operation is successful and you can see that they are in sequence. So we've got that pad, the pocket, followed by the second pocket, and last of all, the chamfer. And the mirroring has taken effect. I say OK. And we finished our part. If we wanted to, we can come back into the mirror and set the refine to true. And this will remove these faces because they're along the same plane and merge them into one. And we see that along here as well. So that's the part finished. So from that lesson, you've learned how to use a reverse pocket, learned about some of the problems that you can have from mirroring. So we must make sure that everything is to one side of that axis if we're building a symmetrical part. And we've also learned what profile to select. In our next video, we're gonna be looking at the final part before assembly. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.